welcome to Tamar Caravan Centre. My name's Ian. I'm here today to show you the handover process uh, for the Swift Base Camp 2. This is the gas locker. Uh, I call it the man cave. Um, this one here, you open, so you have two keys that come supplied with the base camp. I'll show you that in a minute. You open up the little handle here like this, turn it up to the top, and you pull open on a, this is on a, a gas strut here like this. So in the gas locker, we have the spare wheel, which is just there, which is fastened on by a little fastener just here. And um, there's facility or place for two gas cylinders. Um, we normally recommend the six kilo. Uh, the gas hose is fitted to the regulator, which is the bulkhead regulator just here. You get this little black tool that comes supplied. Um, there's a little uh, tester, which is just here. It should always be in that flush position. If it's popped out, you need to use the little tool and just turn it and pop that back in. Uh, so inside the gas locker, you also have the Chris um, chassis number. Um, some people call it a VIN number or a Chris number or a chassis number. It's all the same number just there like this. You can distinguish the age of the van um, by the number or the letter after the manufacturer. So this is SW for Swift and M is the year, so that's the 2021. Um, underneath we have the chassis plate here as well and you can organize to have it upgraded which is at a small cost um, after or um, it will be a, a free cost or free of charge if you place that before well, or when you order the caravan. Okay um, so on each corner of the base camp you have um, corner studies. Uh, there's a corner study hand winder that comes supplied uh, so you pop that one uh, into this uh, little hole just here. It's a 19 mil nut and you wind this one down until you get um, it level. Um, so you level the van left to right um, using kind of level blocks or uh, bits of wood or things like that. Then you use the jockey wheel to wind it front to back to get it level. Once you've got it level, then you put the steadies down. Um, the, you don't try and level it up on the steadies, you just try to um, uh, take the pressure and stop it rocking around when you're in the van. Um, so this is the site lead. Um, you get a new 25 meter um, site lead supplied with your new base camp. Um, inside here, uh, there's a little uh, lid that you just pull up. Um, so this has got the male end and the female end pops in this side. Um, so you literally just pull this little cap up. Um, there's a little groove just on the bottom there. So you hold this one up, slide it in like that. Uh, also inside this one is the external aerial point. Um, so this is if you've got um, a satellite system or if you've got uh, a communal aerial, then you just plug into that one. So this is the water uh, inlet. Um, so you have your um, water hose supplied with the van. Um, you'll see our previous videos on uh, this one about having a pipe um, to make this more rigid. You pop this one into your barrel, make sure it's fully uh, submerged into the water, um, otherwise it's gonna be sucking in air. Um, there's two little rubber hoses, uh, rubber um, seals on this one, and it's got a little trigger. So when you go to pop it in, just give it a little wiggle and it'll click like this, and just pop that down. It doesn't screw, it just hovers over the top. Um, a little um, top tip as well. Um, if you have it rested down here, which like a lot of people do, um, all night long, it, if it's windy, it's going to be tapping like this. Um, so you can actually push it up and it will lock into that position like that and it stays a bit more rigid. Uh, one of the really nice features that come supplied on the base camp is uh, an external water um, shower point. Um, this has the same trigger function um, as the water uh, inlet. Um, this is an outlet. Um, so basically you have your hose, you pop it in and there's a little um, trigger handle on the end of the shower. Um, so you can use this one for washing your boots, washing the dog or washing your bike off. That comes supplied on the base camp as well. Uh, this is the um, outlet for your heating system. Um, so if you see uh, condensation or steam coming out of there, don't panic, that's just where it comes from. So um, your toilet cassette. On the top of the toilet, um, this is for your flush filler. Um, so you take the little cap off um, here like this, um, pull out the cassette, and there's a little um, kind of filter. Um, just pop that one in the top there like that. Get your watering can or your um, 
water container and you pour the water into here. Also your pink uh, chemical goes in there as well. And when you're filling this one, you'll notice that it doesn't seem to be running away. It looks like it's always full, but just keep going um, until uh, it kind of starts to overflow. And um, when the tank, um, the, the uh, flush tank is full, there's a, uh, there's a little tube just here and you'll see this one filling up with the, uh, the pink uh, chemical. So that's basically a guide just to let you know how full that fresh water tank is um, for your flush water. Um, also, um, when you want to empty it, you just pull out on that little uh, tube there and grab your water container or, um, and then you literally just tip it out like this and then that'll empty the water from the flush tank. Um, that one then just goes back up into there like that. So, um, toilet cassette, you just pull up on this little um, handle just in the bottom there and you just slide this one out. This is quite a long one on the uh, base camp. You have a little handle so it just slides out like that so you can wheel it off to disposal. Um, when you get down there, uh, this one here opens up like this. Um, and then you have this button which is your pressure release valve. So press this one and then um, your waste will discharge down into the toilet. Um, when you get, um, you can open this little cap up here, uh, put the, uh, the hose in, give it a little swirl around and empty it back out like that. Um, you put your blue chemical into this cassette. Um, so there is a little um, guide on the lid here, so how much blue to use. Um, if it's starting to smell, just use more blue, but you should never really need more than a capful. So that one basically just tips into there with your blue chemical. Um, close the lid, get the little slider. That one goes into there like that. Uh, pop the lid back on here. Put the little filler cap back in there like that. And then this one just slides in. Before you do that, um, it is really important to keep this area um, dry, uh, there is kind of a lot of electrics and PCB boards and stuff in here. So um, before, you make, before you put the cassette back in, just give it a wipe out with a, with a cloth just to keep that as dry as you can. Then you just slide that one back into there. It just locks away like that. Then you just close the locker door and then there's a lock function just there as well. So this is the water waste outlets. Um, so there's one here and one here. One is for the sinks and one is for the shower. Um, that's basically your grey water, or your wastewater. So anything that goes down the plug hole comes out here. This is the um, overflow pipe from your heating system. Um, so if there's um, condensation or water, that basically will come out of that little tap there. Okay, so we're at the rear of the base camp. Um, this has um, LED light clusters. Uh, so you have your uh, side lights, you have your um, brake lights, fog light, indicator and reverse all in the one cluster. There is also a high level brake light just up here. Um, down the bottom you'll have your uh, chassis plate. So this has got the manufacturer, the model, the VIN number, MRO, MTPLM. So MRO is your max running order. That's the weight of the caravan um, when it came from the factory. The MTPLM is your max permissible load, that's your golden weight. So on this particular one, the caravan and its load can't exceed 1,043 kilos. Um, you, can, you do have the facility to upgrade that if your vehicle is more capable. Um, tire size, so this is a 185R14. Tire pressure, 49 PSI. It also gives you the wheel torque on here as well. So for the um, alloy, uh, the steel wheel is 88 newton meters, and for the alloy, it's 130 newton meters. Um, we always recommend that you check your wheel torques um, before every tow. Um, there's a place for your number plate just here, um, door handle, and there's also um, on this new 2020. One model, there's a um, window in the door, which has a little blind here like this. Um, to lock the door from the inside, you just open like this and the two little pins come out. And then to open, you just press down like that. 
So um, in the uh, base camp you have an oven and a grill and you have a three burner hob. All of these run off your gas cylinder which is in the gas locker down the front. Um, there's light switches just down here to the side, uh, one for the awning and one for the mood lighting around the top there. This little panel just up here is for the tracker. So there is a tracker option on the 2021 base camps. Um, it, it, you do have to pay a subscription fee if you want to activate that one. Um, you have your um, storage lockers up in here. That's for your solar panel. Um, the solar panel will just come on and go off as required. Obviously it's not showing anything because we're just indoors here at the moment. Um, with the window, um, you have little buttons here, so you need to press the button on the window, catch, and then you open it up like this. And then it has like a little ratchet, so you basically just click it out to the ratchet like that. It has two positions like this. You just push it past the ratchet to close it down. So you've got position one there like that, push past to close. Then you have your night position and your lock position. There's a fly screen that pulls down and your blackout blind that pulls up and the two lock together like that. Be careful with these little clips because they, uh, they are easy to break. Um, this is your um, chopping board or your um, sink cover there like that. Um, on this one is uh, your power point, so you switch it on just there like this and you have three power points there. To hide this one you just press the little button in like that and it will slide down out of the way just like that uh, then we have uh, over here the um, cutlery drawer there's a little storage compartment just under here there's an, another little storage and a uh, utensils drawer just there um, and then you have your fridge to open the fridge there's a little button on the top you just press this one uh, you have your freezer compartment just in there as well. To um, ajar the door uh, for winter storage, you just pop this one in and you slide it across like that. And then that will keep the door um, jarred. Uh, so it will stop it from smelling or going mouldy. Um, to operate the fridge, you have your main uh, button just on here to turn the fridge um, on and off. Just like this so this is on the off position to turn your fridge on you press that gray button again that'll turn the fridge on you select which source you want by using this button just here so you press these arrows so at the moment it's on mains you've got leisure battery that's not leisure battery so that's your vehicle battery so when you're towing um, you put it onto this one that will have your feed from your tow vehicle the next one is your gas and your mains. The gas um, will self-ignite, but you need to make sure you prime the gas through before um, on the hobs before you select the uh, the gas. Mains, obviously, if you're if you're on site. Um, we to adjust the temperature, and um, you just press this one here. So if it's a hot day, you have it on five. If it's a colder day, you don't need it to work so hard. You just adjust it like that. Uh, so to make the beds, um, the beds on the base camp work quite well. You can either have it as two single beds, um, so you can just remove the cushions uh, like this. What we normally recommend that you do is you flip the, the cushion, the seated cushion, the wrong way round, so you sleep on the flat side like this. Um, the, uh, the bed also um, pulls out to make a large, a really large uh, double bed. Um, so to do that, you just pull up on this little um, bracket and you just slide that one across uh, like this and then you just flip the cushions over uh, like that and then you just do the same on the other side and then you use this one here as the infill uh, just like that just repeat that same process for this side as well so um, you can also um, carry bikes in the base camp, which is one of the reasons it's, it's extremely popular. Um, so you just pop the cushions down like this from the, the kind of bed position, and then you just literally pull right up on the bed like this, fold these ones away. Then you have these little buckles 
and basically just clip onto here like this. You do the same on this side. You can then you put these cushions, they just slide in behind here. Uh, and then you have these anchor points just here. Um, so the bike uh, can come in, rest against this, and then you tether it down to the floor. Okay, so you have a lovely big uh, front window on the base camp. And this has a uh, drop down fly screen, which you literally just pull down like this. When you're pushing it away, just use two hands to guide it up nice and easily uh, like this. And then you also have your blackout blind. Again, just pull this up gently and then it will clip up there like that. When you're packing it away, just give it a little push. Don't push it too fast um, and just slide it down nicely and gently like that. And um, one little tip that we do recommend, um, some people ask whether we should leave travel with the blinds um, in the up position or in the down position. Um, we always recommend that you leave the blinds down uh, just because they're on little um, springs, little um, little cable, little bits of rope here. Um, so you don't want them to sag and bounce down. So we just recommend that you tow with the, the blinds down. Um, on the front here, you also have this little table, which you literally just pull up. And then there's two little silver clips here. So you just pull those ones round and then that supports the, the little table. So um, you have little um, LED spotlights, um, which have their own individual uh, uh, switch there. Um, with this particular one, um, it's also dimmable and you can dim it or brighten it like this by turning the rear of the light like that. And then to turn it off, you just press the little switch there like that. Um, on this side over here, you also have supplied a TV bracket. So there is a TV aerial which is in this cupboard. Um, that will just fit onto there. And then you have your TV aerial point uh, or satellite aerial. And there's a 12 volt power or uh, mains power. This is a um, light switch uh, just over here. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration on the uh, Swift command panel. So on here, this is the home page. Um, so you've got your uh, internal temperature, external temperature, the humidity inside the van. Um, you've got your date, uh, your time, we're plugged into mains and the leisure battery is uh, charging. Um, when you have it illuminated, so these are all your icons for each function you want to operate. So this is for your water pump. Um, so that was the um, pump that goes into the little barrel um, outside. So to turn the pump on, you select it like this and it's illuminated basically means it's on. When you turn it off, that's off. This is your awning light, which is the one just outside the door. Then you have your lighting, which is the mood lighting. You can press this one on and off like this. Um, so you can split the front of the van and the rear of the van off. This is also um, dimmable, so you can dim these lights down, which is just there. And you can turn it back up depending on the mood that you require it. So back to the home page, then you have your power. So this is just so you can see um, we're plugged into uh, mains at the moment. Um, and from the leisure battery, um, we're using 5.2 amps and the leisure battery is uh, charging or in a, a good position. Um, if you, um, you've got your solar, which is obviously not doing anything at the moment, but if, uh, if you were outside um, and it required, it would just, you would see what the solar panel is inputting. And then this is for your vehicle, which is your tow vehicle. Um, so when you plug into the, the car, this will tell you the condition of your vehicle battery, which is quite important to know if you're wanting to operate the fridge um, whilst you're, whilst you're traveling. Um, if you press into uh, this little one here, this will tell us what we're on mains. So what we're currently using around about 3.5 amps um, for on mains at the moment. Um, you can also limit um, the amount of uh, ampage that the van will let you use. So if you arrive to site and you want to you your ask on the site, you know what their post runs at. Most in the UK are on 16 amp. Um, so the van won't let you use any more than 16 amp um, that will um, stop you from tripping the site. If you go to a site and it's a 10 amp, you can set it or if it's less than that, you, you can do the same. Go back onto um, home screen. 
like this and you have your heating. So um, manual uh, means that you're using the, uh, the whale heating system, which I'll come on to in a minute. Um, timer means you're using the command uh, panel uh, to operate the heating system. Um, with the timer, you've got, you can turn your water on gas, um, mains, um, one kilowatt or two kilowatts, um, or a mix of both. So you've got one kilowatt and mains uh, gas, two kilowatts in gas or off. Um, same with the blown air. So you've got your fan, gas, mains, two kilowatt, three kilowatts and off. Um, then if you go into a uh, timer, you can set the different times to come on and um, go off and so on. You can set the temperature and if you want the water on as well. Um, back to this one and then there's the app one there as well. I'm going to leave it on manual for a minute because I'm going to demonstrate the uh, the whale heating system in a moment. Um, back to the home page. So in your settings, um, you change the, uh, the time um, just by flicking through like this. You just find the time that you that you require. Um, then you find the uh, the date that you need just by popping this one up like this. Like that, and we're on Wednesday. You can brighten and darken the screen like on this one. And then you can time out the screen because five minutes when you're lying here waiting for this to turn off is quite long. So you can have 30 minutes and uh, an hour, 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, whichever you want. Um, if you wanted to operate the Bluetooth um, uh, control for the panel, you just pair your device here and you delete it here. There is a beep function as well because there's no physical button that you're pressing. You can turn that one on and off. And there's also a night mode so it doesn't brighten up this whole screen. Um, back to um, the home page and then we have our fridge so we can also operate the fridge from here as well as on the fridge itself so you can turn the fridge off um, you've got your mains you've got your vehicle battery gas auto off we're just going to leave it on mains at the moment one thing I just want to quickly explain about the fridge as well um, you can see at the moment that this is saying that the fridge is warm um, we're on an extremely hot day today um, so inside the van is tw uh, 21 degrees, outside the van 23 degrees. Um, the fridge works or is 10% below ambient. So if the fridge is, if the outside temperature is 23 degrees, your fridge will be running 10 degrees less than that. So this particular fridge will be, it'd be 13 degrees in the fridge. So it's not like a domestic fridge like you have at home. Um, they do work extremely hard, um, but they, they, they won't always keep it cool if you have a, a, a very hot day. Um, so where it's showing warm, um, obviously once you get to temperature, but it might be saying warm and you've got it as hot as you can or as hard as you can go, um, that's going to be the best it's going to get. So just be wary of that. Um, one other thing I just want to quickly show you with the command panel. Um, obviously this is a touch screen. Um, so to um, sometimes it'll get a bit sticky so when you're pressing the button it's not doing anything um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to recalibrate the screen so to do that um, you press and hold the swift button here like this so this will turn off um, all the lights and everything but you keep your finger held on the swift panel like uh, button just here like this it'll just take a few moments and it'll bring up a blue screen. That blue screen says touch the dots to calibrate. So what you do is you follow the dots and that'll recalibrate the screen. So that's basically telling the screen where the buttons are again. You press the swift button and you press it again. You can then come back to the home page like this. This will then become a lot more responsive um, if you do get that sticky, sticky um, buttons. So this is your whale um, heating system. So it does your um, hot water and the heating in the van. So at the moment you can see that they're both showing us off. So what you do with the water, make sure you've got water on board in, in the boiler, which you do by priming the water through. Um, press um, this button, so this will wake up that screen. So this is a uh, two kilowatts of electric. That's your gas. You can have a mix of gas and one kilowatt gas and two kilowatts 
um, you can have one kilowatt like this. So select the one that you want it to run on. I'm going to select one kilowatt just like that. That will then just start heating up the boiler um, and getting your hot water um, to temperature. The next one underneath this is for your heating system. So you press this little um, button just here to wake this one up. And again, you can select which source you want. So this is uh, one kilowatt, two kilowatts of power, three kilowatts, which we don't recommend that you use, um, gas or off. So again, I'm just gonna run this one on one kilowatt at the moment. This, this now is running at around about 4.2 uh, amps. So if you're on a 16 amp site, this is using a, around about um, uh, around about a quarter of your power on the heating. So that's why I recommend one kilowatt. Some people go on to two kilowatts, which is using around about eight amps. Um, then to turn the heating on, um, you literally just um, select the temperature you want it to be. So um, if, you, if it's too hot, you can turn it down on this little minus button. And if it's too cold, you want it hotter, you literally just turn it up like that. Okay, so um, this is inside the uh, the cupboard, um, and it has all the workings of the uh, of the van itself. So just to quickly show you these bits, this is this black bit you can see here. That's your water pump. That's what's actually sucking the water from the um, the barrel outside or onto the van. Um, it's obviously an onboard pump, so it can get quite noisy, uh, and it's a mechanical pump. So this one here is the um, the surge damper so this then slows that flow to give you a more domestic uh, flow out of out of the tap and um, this little yellow um, tap just here is your um, dump water uh, tap so once you've got the water on board and you finished your holiday you open this little tap up and then that will literally uh, drop all the water out onto the floor so that's all the water that's in the pipes will drop out onto the floor. That's the best way to store the van. Um, these are all plastic pipes and if they have water in it um, uh, through the winter, they can freeze and crack. Uh, also, they can go all black and like um, mildew, like um, mouldy. So um, it's best to drain the water out of your van. Um, this bit here is your, your uh, combi boiler and you have two switches just out under here. Um, just leave these two on all the time. That's just to say that the um, one's for the heating system, one's for the hot water. Just leave those on um, and then you can operate it all from that um, whale system I showed you a moment ago. Um, that's kind of all you'll really need under under there. Um, so there is a little um, tidy which you basically just pop into the van uh, here like this. And then you just slide uh, that one through the little guides and then that will keep it all nice and tidy in there. Um, this section here is for the command, um, the main PSU. Um, so um, this one here is your power. Let me just quickly show you in there. So this one here is your power button. That's for your main uh, on and off switch. Um, so if you get like a, a fault with the van, um, like the control panel's not working, that's kind of like your master reboot. Press that one off, let it sit for about 10 seconds and then switch it back on again. Um, this one here is your um, reverse polarity warning. So if you go into Europe, um, the van will ro run in ob opposite polarity or negative polarity, but we don't recommend that you do that. Um, the next one is your uh, charger. Just leave that one on for the, for the battery charger. And the next one is your heating um for the uh the heating system again that's not to say the heating's on it's just to say that it's ready so just leave leave that one on as well um then you'll see uh two little flip catches just here so inside this one is for all your um 12 volt fuses um so if one of these um pops if I can just demonstrate that it'll glow a little um red led light you can see that one there so you know which one is popped and then you just replace that one and it'll go back all onto green like that and then inside this one is all your trip switches so um the top one here um the little black one is for a test so say you arrive to site and you've got no power um what you can do is see what's at fault by pressing this little test button just here um so you press the test button if it flicks over that trip switch just flick there that means you've got power coming to the van um, so that means the van is at fault. 
Um, if you press that trip switch, so you just flick that one back up like that. If you press the, the test button and that one doesn't trip over, that means the site is at fault. So either the site post or the site lead itself. Um, then you just need to go down and see um, reception. Um, then over this side, you have your trips for your um, MCBs. Um, so this is for your sockets and the fridge, anything that's running off mains. Like you'd have at home, if these trip over, you just flick them back up. If um, they keep tripping, whatever you're using, it, is, it has a fault. Inside this cupboard, you also have your freestanding table and you have your um, Vision Plus uh, amplifier. Um, you can also um, adjust this one just by turning it over. Um, and then you have your TV um, aerial, which you adjust just on here like this. So you just open this one up. Um, with the, there's a little um, H just on here. This needs to be in the direction of travel um, when you're traveling. You slide that one right up like this. Um, then you've also um, got a horizontal positioning or a vertical vertical positioning. So you just wind this handle up like this, so it will go from lying horizontal to in that flat position, um, vertical position. Then when you're storing it, you just pack it away by winding this one back down. Turn this little handle, and then just pull it down until you hear the little bump and then that will uh, then do up like this. Okay, so in the wash area, um, you have um, your shower and your toilet facility all in the one cubicle. Um, you have uh, LED lights, which are just up here like this. Um, tap, and you have your shower tap. You have the Eco Camel um, shower head. Um, and you can stop this one uh, mid-flow uh, just by pressing on this little button just here. So you can um, you get about four or five minutes of hot water um, from the shower. Um, so just um, you can you can make it last a bit longer by uh, pressing on on that one there. And then in the actual uh, toilet itself, um, you've got your shower and toilet lid. Then this one here is the slider operator. Um, and then you have your flush, which is this one. And when the cassette tank is nearly full, um, this little um, light will glow. Um, so you know that the tank is uh, full and, and needs to be emptied. Um, you also have a towel rail and uh, a little uh, vanity cupboard and another LED light just there. And then you have your fly screen and your blackout blind just there. And then to open the roof light, you just push in on this one. And to close, you pull it down and to open, you can pull it up like that.